James Oledek brings us on the inside of Microsoft's responsible AI process. Do you know all of the things Microsoft does to keep your data safe with Copilot? Rich prompt injection blocking. And, and that human in the middle is an important part. That security over that business data is still honored. An administrator or IT is in control. We have a civil, a professional discussion. What about the logs? And we talk about what goes on on the inside. I'm arguing that this is an arm because it's kind of wavy. Sorry, I need a haircut. <laughs> it's, you look camera ready. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Flattery you will get you everywhere with me. <laughs> Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Toppers from the PowerCat team, and we're here back with James. Hey, James. Thanks for having me back, Phil. I'm glad you're back. You bring AI goodness when you come. What cool new AI stuff have you brought? Does it start with the word co-pilot? No, 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 no. Today's not about new features. Today is about going behind the curtain of Copilot. We're going to talk about how you help answer all those questions that comes from your IT and SecArc teams around, hey, what do they need to know before you can enable Copilot for your organization? That is important. Now, before we get into the, like, the guts of how this thing works, uh, there might be a couple people who haven't heard of Copilot. What is it? Sure. Well, I say Copilot are AI-driven assistants, and they're across Microsoft, Dynamics 365, Power Platform. And they combine the power of large language models with your business data, your business workflows to help you get jobs done faster and save time, improve productivity. So you mentioned Dynamics and Power Platform, right? These, these systems touch my business data. Can I trust a large language model like with a, what's behind Copilot? Can I trust that with this data? Yeah, you can because the large language models that we're using underneath the covers, these are using Azure OpenAI hosted models, right? These are not using ChatGPT behind the scenes or other models from other vendors, which means that the customer data, right, your customer data that's being used and flowing to these models is remaining within the Microsoft Cloud Trust Boundary and is not used for training those large language models later on. Wait, so I, I know I have heard this come up a lot. So if if my data, right, the data that's in the answer isn't being used for retraining, like how does Copilot know about it? Something called retrieval augmented generation or RAG, right? So for example, if a user, say, asks one of our Copilot experiences a, a question around their business data, say, how many invoices are due in the next week, mm -hmm. right? Right. The Azure OpenAI models, these large language models, they have no understanding of how your I system invoices. record is storing invoices. Yeah. They don't know how the system is tracking when they're due. What happens is our system dynamically looks up the relevant data schema using our own embedding indexes and then uses the large language models to help translate that user's question, right? Their prompt, how many invoices are due in the next week into a query, right? That we run against the system of record. And that query is executed in the user's context. And then we return those results, right? Back to the experience, right? So the data isn't trained on the model. We use the model to translate that prompt into a query we run and pass along the relevant business context and schema in order to answer the question right. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned before, like, this is all in the user's context. What does that mean, right? Because Copilot is going and accessing my business data. Do I have to worry about it sharing too much? Yeah, and that's right. And so, like, going back to that previous RAG conversation, so we translated how many invoices are due in the next week, and we used a large language model to just generate a query, right, in terms of that system or record to run against that system or record. Then this is also the part of our platform, right, where we bring our data platform and Dataverse, our 1,200 Power Platform connectors. Well, guess what? That query, it's run against those systems of record in the user's context. What does that mean? It means that that security over that business data is still honored. So your security over your data, like where it exists at rest, is still honored even if you integrate it with a Copilot experience. That is really powerful. That's super, super important for people to understand. All right, James, you've convinced me that it's not like storing my company data. But I mean, everything we do is logged, right? For auditing and compliance. What about the logs? Are those That's right. And, and that, yeah. yeah, what about the logs, Phil? What about, what about the logs? Right. <laughs> so let's talk about logs. Let's talk about them. So transcripts of Copilot uh, conversations, that's actually stored uh, within Dataverse. So you have those full transcripts for your Copilot 
uh, experiences. Also, if you're, hey, you're, if you're asking, hey, logs, I'm actually looking for telemetry because I'm the person building this. How do I diagnose if things are going with? Well, we have integration to application insights, right? So you can diagnose if the right things are happening, you're getting the right behavior. And then there's also like, what about logs around what administrators and developers and makers are doing? What are they building? And those activity logs, right, just like the rest of the capabilities across the Power Platform, those logs are written to Microsoft 365 and Purview, along with the unified activity log that even is there and populated by Microsoft 365 apps as well. I ask, what about the logs? And you give me more than I even realized I knew. I needed to know. What are friends for, uh, Phil? <laughs> that's the thing. Thank you, James. So, James, I, I trust this more, but now let's talk about the types of customers that use this platform, right? Small businesses, sure, but large enterprises, banks, entire governments... They're subject to regulatory compliance. How do they trust this? Because our products built on Dataverse adhere to the compliance standards across the geos that we support around the world. So that means ISO, that means SOC. If you're in the EU, that means compliance with the EU data boundary, where data has to be stored and processed within the EU region, right? And not only that, but we're also guided with Microsoft's responsible AI principles of fairness, reliability, and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency, and accountability. And so let's make it let's make it real then. Like, okay, so I can get I can get invoices from Copilot, but can I rely on Copilot to actually like make decisions for me? In manufacturing, AI can be used to analyze data coming in from sensors and machine and predict maintenance when it needs to happen, reducing downtime, increasing efficiency, right? In business, AI could be used to analyze sales data, help make managers make better decisions for their team, analyze cust customer feed feedback, improving and that uh, feedback loop for developing new products, right? In all these examples, AI acts as a co-pilot, right? It provides an accelerated way to get the right information and insights for the person who's doing that job to make better decisions faster, right? And, and that human in the middle is an important part, right? Yeah. Really co-pilots around helping, you know, the workers out there make the final decision. Just do it, make a better first decision, make it faster than that they important. would have done otherwise with the current applications they have. So James, you have earned my trust. I, I now I, I understand like, how Copilot uses my data, how it protects it, and how it only accesses things that I could only access normally anyways. But what about like, you know, I read about like crazy things you could do with prompts where you could make, you know, you'd make something like Copilot spill information that it shouldn't with prompt mm -hmm. injections. That's right. What about that? What about that? We are implementing rich prompt injection blocking. We're actually using other AI models to detect these attacks, right? Detect intentional efforts by users to exploit the vulnerabilities. We're essentially catching and preventing all of these cases so you don't have to. And then it's one of those big reasons why like you should build on us or consider building on us or using our copilots is so that you get the benefit of not having to build all those protections and safeguards yourself for your application. It's interesting that we have AI protecting the AI. Who guards the AI that guards the AI, James? <laughs> well, that and that's like the last thing I want to call out is like an administrator or IT is in control. You can enable this at an application level and an environment level, right? So that you enable Copilot as you see fit within your organization. That really is the human in the middle on top of everything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, James, I trust you. We all we all trust Copilot. Where do we go next to get started? Well, right now there'll be links floating around my head or in the description below it's around Microsoft Responsible AI Guidelines, our capabilities and features around Copilot security and privacy, and even more important, some of the links around how you can get started and learn more around Copilot for Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. It's all down there. There's a lot to get started. Thanks, James. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching, everybody.